Hello, everyone. I'm Ross, and I'm going to take you through how you can use a library called Zod together with SvelteKit to create forms that are validated on the server. Uh, Zod's a pretty cool library. It um, enables you to check types of different things at runtime instead of um, at development time and ensure that users are submitting valid inputs to your application. So let's get started. Um, we're going to follow this blog post that I wrote. Um, I'll put the link in the description in case you want to follow along. So let's create our spell kit project using the create spell CLI. I'm going to use TypeScript, prettier spell 5. And then we're going to install Zod as a development dependency. Next, we'll go in and we'll create our user schema. And we'll rename this to Zod Schemas. And this is a, just a module we can house all of our Zod Schemas in. So I'll copy and paste this code. And we're importing. Um, Z from Zod. Z is the object that all of the methods that Zod supplies are on, and they can be chained together. So to create a schema, we'll um, use the z.object z method, and we'll supply an email, and then Zod can validate and also transform. So we're going to check and make sure it's a string, an email, and then we're going to do a transform, and we'll trim it to trim the white space off of both sides. And then to lowercase to make sure it gets converted into a lowercase email. And then for our password, we're going to make sure it's a string and then make sure it matches this regular expression, which um, will make sure it has at least eight characters and contain an uppercase, lowercase letter, and a number. Uh, so that's what Zod lets us do. Uh, we can use Zod's safe parse method. So we can do. Um, const safe parse equals user schema dot safe parse and if we have a user object for example we could parse user and in this example safe parse will have a data um, an error and a success so success will be true or false Data will have the data if it has been parsed successfully, and error will have the error messages if it is an unsuccessful parse. You can do um, user schema dot parse, and that will actually throw an error um, if it parses incorrectly or if it's unsuccessful. Um, so, what would the error look like if? If somebody inputted this um, user, we'd see it was an invalid email because this email doesn't have a .com. And then also, um, it's also an invalid password because it doesn't contain a number. And it has our message on there since we've supplied this, this message to it. All right, so with SvelteKit, um, it's pretty easy to create a form that you can validate on the server with uh, form actions. So um, we can copy and paste this form into here. And the form has to have a method of post. Um, we're going to use the default action, so no need to specify the action attribute. Um, we'll have two inputs. Uh, the name field is what we'll use to parse the form data, so make sure you have a name field on these. And for our client side validation, we're just going to make sure um, there's something in each of these fields for now. And then we'll have a button. Um, the default type for a button is submit. So all we need to add is just that button. All right. So in SvelteKit, we can add a plus page.server.ts file. You can supply a load function in this file and it will run before the page is requested or you can supply actions and they will run when 
forms get submitted. So we're going to use actions and we'll copy and paste this code into there. Um, so you can see we need to run our dev server again to generate some types for these actions. And I'll walk you through this code. Um, so we'll supply the default action and grab the request object and this will contain our form data. So we need to await request.formData and then we can use formData.get to get the email and the password. This email and password are coming from these name fields or these name attributes. So if we if we supply different names, we would need to use different uh, strings in these in this get method to get that information. Next, we'll call our safe parse method as we did before. So now that we have the user's email and password that they have input, we're gonna parse it with Zod and using our user schema that we've imported from our Zod schemas module. If it's invalid, we're going to return the array of Zod issues that we saw up here. So we're just gonna return this. Um, and then in SvelteKit, we can return the fail. Um, so it'll be a 400 and we're gonna say the issues are equal to the safe parse.air.issues. So we're gonna um, set it equal to this. And then maybe we'll, uh, if it's successful, we'll sign up the user. And in this case, maybe we'll just return success. All right, and that is all we'll need to create a form action. Um, next, we're just gonna create a component that will display our Zod issues. So let's create it in um, lib slash components. And we'll copy this in, and what it will do is it will display a list of Zod issues. So it's gonna render out our array in a more readable format. So it'll take in a list of issues and then it'll generate a unordered list for um, each path and then have the message in there. So we can tell our users what they need to fix. Now let's import this component on our page. And the special thing about SpellKit is that we can use um, the type generation. So first let's import that issues. And then here's where we get to the type generation. And you'll notice that our form element is typed as action data. So if we do if form, if there's a form, then we can see if there are issues on that form. And we'll supply them to our Zod issues. And set issues equal to form dot. And then if our form is successful, let's just add in a success message. And we'll just say success. All right. Now we can test this out. So let's go into our dev environment. And you can see we've got email, password, and sign up. And I'm going to enter in an invalid password here. So we'll just say password and we'll see what happens. And we can see our password is invalid. So let's fix that. And now we have success. So there's a simple way you can use Zod to validate forms on the server.
Let me know if you like this video. Thanks for watching.